Hey guys, welcome back. So, you're gun nuts, right? That's why you watch the Military Arms Channel. So you walk into the gun store, and you're just walking up and down talking to friends. You're not really looking for anything because you think you have everything you want. We've all been there, right? So I'm walking up and down the aisles, and there it is. What is it that I'm talking about? Of course, the gun I can't live without. The gun that I didn't even know was on the market yet. The gun I'd heard rumors about, but there it was in all of its $1,800 glory. And that's MSRP. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the Bren 805 pistol. It's a 5.56 millimeter pistol based on the Bren 805 rifle. And this is a rifle that the Czechs are currently using in their military. And I had no idea that it was actually in the country and being sold. It kind of snuck up on me like the Scorpion did. And there it was. And now the wife is gonna watch the video because the family loves watching my videos. And she's gonna find out that I have a new Bren 805. Hi, honey, I love you. So, if the Military Arms Channel suddenly goes away tomorrow, you'll know why I got killed, because I couldn't say no once more. Anyway, this is the first time I've had this pistol out of the box. I've never fired it. I'm bringing you guys along for its very first range trip. This is the box that it comes in. Innocent enough looking. But inside lies that MSRP $1,800 pistol. Of course, you can pick them up online for a lot less than that, closer to $1,675, less than $1,700. This is what it ships in. Not all that impressive, but is the gun impressive? That's what I want to find out. So let's do a little bit of shooting for the first time with the new Bren 805 pistol. So the 805 is a firearm I'm not all that familiar with. I've read about them online, I've seen the pictures, but I've never really taken much of an interest in them simply because they weren't available on the U.S. market until now. What I do know about it is that it has an aluminum upper, and it has a polymer lower. It may, in fact, remind you of a certain firearm. What could that be? Ah, yes, the SCAR. This pistol and rifle, I may call a rifle occasionally in the video when I'm referring to the military version of it, but this particular firearm was being developed about the same time that the FN SCAR was being developed, and there's a lot of design cues that they share. For example, aluminum upper, polymer lower, reciprocating charging handle that's reversible. When you take the gun down, you can put the charging handle in on the other side. It's located in about the same place. And if you shoot with your hand on the magazine, you'll probably only do it once because the charging handle will come back and bang the snot out of your thumb and remind you that you're not supposed to do that. It uses a short stroke gas piston system. Internally, it looks very similar. None of the parts are interchangeable. This is not a copy of the SCAR and the SCAR is not a copy of this firearm. As a matter of fact, I honestly don't know which one comes first. The history behind the development of this particular firearm is actually pretty interesting. And that's something I'll get into in future videos. So the gun is rather heavy as a pistol. As I mentioned, it has a charging handle that can be reversed. It has ambi controls. So I have a magazine release here, and I also have a magazine release here. If you're curious about what this button is right above the magazine release on the left-hand side, that's so you can lock your bolt open. And it's not all that easy to use. I would like to think that I could just pull the charging handle to the rear, hit that with my thumb. Ah, it worked that time. But it just seems to barely catch the bolt. It's just as easy to try it and not hit it and not and where it kind of catches and goes forward like that, you really have to push that button in hard. And even then, it just kind of sort of locks to the rear. But that is a bolt hold open device. Now there's no bolt release. So once you put a fresh magazine in, you have to hit the charging handle like that to charge the weapon. I've also noticed the sights, based upon pictures I've seen online, aren't the sights that are being used by the military version of the gun. The rear aperture has four different little peep sights that you can use. You can flip them over. It's easy enough to do. Front sight is adjustable for elevation. Rear sight is adjustable for windage. Gas piston system right here, easily accessible from the front, and then it has a muzzle brake. I don't know how effective it is because I've yet to pull the trigger on it. And you're probably saying, Mac, shut up, pull the trigger. All right, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. The gun ships with US made 30 round magazines. They're standard. AR-15 M16 style magazines. Locks into place, charge the weapon. Make sure your thumb is away from that charging handle. And let's see if I can hit a challenge target down there at about, eh, not even quite 25 yards. Well, the sights look like they're pretty much on. Eh, 
Yeah, maybe a little bit to the right. All right, just out of my peripheral vision, I can see some somewhat erratic ejection. It looks like some of the brass is just barely coming out of the ejection port. Others are making it a little bit further. The trigger pull's really, really light. Now I'm firing Wolf Gold, which is Taiwanese M193 ball. So it is um, NATO spec ammunition. It's used by the Taiwanese military. Recoil's not existent. The muzzle brake certainly seems to be effective. I really do like the trigger on it. Now this thing is a prime candidate for becoming an SBR. I noticed on the CZ USA web, uh, I'm sorry, Facebook page, they did say that they plan to bring the stocks in with the uh, parts that are necessary to make it 922R compliant, and you'll be able to buy those stocks and 922R parts here in the near future. They didn't give a date, but that's really, really good news for me because really as a pistol, this has limited value to me. I really want to turn this thing into a rifle, so I'm going to file my Form 1 right away and get to it. So it's really good news that CZ plans to do that. They're already doing it with the Scorpion Evo 9mm pistol, and I've already filed my paperwork on that and pre-ordered my stock and 922R parts. All right, bolt locks open. I can actually feel it lock open, which is a good thing. Uh, it, gun talks to you, much like an AR-15 talks to you. You can feel it when it locks open when it's empty. Drop the magazine out. Magazines fall free nicely. All right, so no problems. That was the very first 30 rounds I'd fired through the gun. Let's load up some more ammunition, shoot some more, and also let's take a look inside this thing and see what it looks like. Disassembly of the Bren is super simple. Let's take a look at it. First of all, you'll want to drop the magazine out of the weapon. Make sure that it's empty. Your safety is present on both sides of the gun. It's in a really good spot in the firing position. You'll notice it doesn't get underneath my firing finger and it's still easily manipulated from my thumb. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the, the weapon on safe. I've checked to make sure it's empty. Now you have two pins on either end of the gun. To start the disassembly, I'm going to take out this first pin. Now you can push the pins through from either side. It has a little detent on it, a little piece of spring steel. You'll want to push down on that little detent and then push the pin across. No matter how hard you push on those pins, they won't come out unless you do that. Take the pin out and put it someplace where you won't lose it. Famous last words. You don't have to take this other pin out just yet. There's a big button here on the rear end cap. You're going to push this in. It's going to compress the recoil spring on the gun. You do that, and then you can push down on it, and the end cap comes off. If you get a stock for it after you file your Form 1 for your SBR, that's how easy it is to put the stock on the pistol. All right, now you can pull your recoil spring out. You can hinge your lower down and stop there, or if you want, you can take the pin out of the front as well and completely detach the upper and the lower. Your charging handle comes back to this takedown point. From there you simply pull it out. And now your bolt and carrier are free to come out of the receiver. Now here's something that's weird about this gun. You cannot, without armorer's tools, and the, and the manual recommends you do not, remove the bolt from the carrier. There's no simple way to do it. I tried and tried and tried to do it before looking at the manual, thinking I could figure it out. Then I looked in the manual and it says, don't do that. So if you want to clean inside there, you're going to have to, uh, you know, use some gun scrubber and, you know, I use Break Free CLP to clean and just hope for the best um, because they're not going to tell you how to do it. I even searched other YouTube videos and nobody takes this bolt out of the carrier just yet. The carrier's rather short. It's different than the SCAR. The SCAR has a much longer carrier but you can see where the gas piston acts upon the face of the carrier right there. The polymer lower, you can see your trigger. When I push the bolt stop, you can see how it just starts to raise the bolt stop there. Hammer, flip it to fire, 
You can see inside the trigger mechanism, it is a metal housing inside a polymer frame. Rugged, definitely more, I don't know, less flexible, I should say, than the SCAR. It's one thing I've always disliked about the SCAR is how flimsy it feels. This feels much more rigid than the SCAR does. The upper is a chunk. Again, the SCAR looks like it's made out of some sort of extruded aluminum or something. It's very thin. This looks like it's machined. It's much heavier than the SCAR, but you'll find that it's very well made. No machine marks, nothing. I mean, it's just the bolt and carrier feel like they're, they're riding on ball bearings inside the firearm. To put it back together, you can disassemble the gas system, but it's still hot right now. Basically, you have a pin here. You rotate this, and your gas piston and spring will come out. Like I said, we, we were just uh, firing it a few moments ago, and I don't want to touch that thing. It's scorching hot. We'll get more into the details of the insides of the gun uh, once I do some more videos. Put it back together. You take your bolt and carrier. Make sure your bolt's extended. Drop it down inside. Take your trigger mechanism, lower, put it on. I'm going to put this first pin in. You will not want to put the second pin in yet. Now you take your recoil spring. It only goes one way. It goes inside the bolt, actually, before I do that. Your charging handle. Now you'll notice there's a U-shape cutout in the charging handle. That's because the recoil spring locks inside of it and keeps it from coming out. So you'll want to make that U-shaped piece go down. You can put the charging handle on either side. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the left-hand side of the gun. Line up the hole. Drop it in with that U-shape down. It'll only go in the right way. It's slotted in such a way that you can't put it in upside down. Grunt proof. Now you can put your recoil spring in. Like so. Take your end cap. Push down on that recoil spring. It'll lock into place. Now everything stays together. Apparently you don't need this rear pin, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Quick function check. And it's back together, ready to shoot. So you guys are probably wondering just how similar is the Bren 805 compared to the SCAR 16S. Here you have the two guns field stripped side by side. Bren on the top, SCAR on the bottom. Let's start off with the lower receiver groups, trigger housings. Very similar, not identical, but conceptually they look like siblings. Right down to the controls, although I much prefer the SCAR's bolt stop and bolt release. If you take a look at the bolts themselves, this is the Bren in my left hand, SCAR on the bottom. You'll notice very, very similar, right down to the fact if you look at the other sides, you can hardly tell them apart with the exception of the length of the carrier. Notice the little keys that shapes the bolt, uses the AR-15 style locking lugs. Very similar. The charging handles, here's the Brins on the top, scar on the bottom. If you look at the receivers themselves, you'll notice, again, a lot of similarities. The cuts for the charging handles, about the same location. The ejection ports, roughly the same size. The location of the ejection port buffer is about the same. Very, very similar looking guns. Again, almost as if they're siblings. None of the parts interchange. Both seem to be high quality firearms. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out with us on the first range trip with the new Bryn 805 pistol. Now, some of you guys have been calling this the affordable SCAR. I guess that would be true if any of the parts interchange with the SCAR, which they don't, or if the SCAR was available as a pistol, which it's not, or if the 805 was available as, as a rifle, which it isn't. However, this thing is a prime candidate for an SBR, as I already mentioned. You can quickly put a stock on it once they're in the country and you file your Form 1, get it approved and get it back. And CZ USA has, like I said, announced that they will be bringing in the 922R parts and the stocks from uh, the Czech Republic. The gun's quality is outstanding. There's a few quirks. I will say that I do not like the reciprocating charging handle. That sucks, especially on a pistol where you're, you would be inclined to grab it by the magazine, and especially because this thing gets hot very quickly. Uh, it, we haven't shot it for a while. The heat soak is, is really quick into the receiver itself, and this is all metal, and it gets hot really, really quick, which is why you saw me shooting it while holding the magazine in some of the scenes. 
When you do that, you run the risk of sticking your thumb up there with that reciprocating charging handle. That's just an owie looking for a place to happen. So I don't care much for that. I think the bolt hole open design, or, or the design of the bolt hole open, could uh, probably be revisited by the Czech engineers. That thing is mostly a joke. It's uh, really poorly located. The button isn't nearly tall enough. It just doesn't work very well for me. But other than that, the quality is exceptional. It's exactly what you'd expect from CZ. Street value on these things, MSRP, 1800 bucks. I didn't pay that for mine. I was able to twist the arm of my gun shop. I did not get this through Copper Custom. I got it through Bly Sports. They got one in. And of course, I couldn't live without it. And so here it is. Now, if you want to buy one, I don't recommend paying over MSRP. If you want to get one and you find one online somewhere that's in stock, uh, you know, if you're going to pay MSRP and you're a check nut, you know, you'd like CZ stuff, you know, go ahead and pay it. But wait, the prices will settle down. I, like I said, I've already seen them online for like $1,679, under $1,700. Is it worth it? Worth is a relative thing. Now, we've only shot a couple hundred rounds out of the pistol this afternoon. Haven't done any extensive testing with it whatsoever, accuracy or reliability. But based upon what I've seen this afternoon, that's a typical you know, CZ firearm. It's high quality, works well, and the recoil is almost non-existent with this rather unique muzzle brake. The muzzle blast off this thing is absolutely horrendous. I'll be talking more about this pistol in the future. We're going to keep bringing it out here, and especially after I get my Form 1 back, which is taking at least four months. I still haven't gotten it back on my Scorpion Evo, the 9mm pistol, which I'll show you guys once I actually get the Form 1 back. CZ USA is importing the stocks, the 922R kits for those, and I'll show you that as soon as it comes out. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll talk to you guys soon.